Hello, and today we're going to talk about one of the most active components to your sump pump, which is the switch. And as you can see in front of me, there are multiple designs of float switches that you can purchase. So the first pump we have here is a one third horsepower with a tether switch. And as you can see, as the tether comes up with the switch on it, it is activated here. As the water is pumped out, it deactivates down here. So the range of motion is very large on this tether switch, which is a bonus because the pump will run longer and pump more water per cycle. The disadvantage is pumps like to jump around. And as they jump around in the basin, as they turn on and off, this could get close to the wall of the basin, other cords, what have you, and get hung up and keep from turning on. This here is a third horsepower pump as well. It's an all cast iron with also, this has an integrated switch on it. As water rises, the pump is activated. As water is pumped out, it is deactivated. So as you can see on this one, the range of motion is not very large. So this is where that loses the battle to the tether switch. However, with it having a connection to the bottom and top, it's much more reliable going straight up and straight down. This pump is also a one third horsepower pump. And as you can see, it has a vertical float switch on it where the switch comes straight up on a rod, activates as the water is pumped out, deactivates at the bottom. So this is a very reliable switch because the range of motion is decent and it's also going straight up and down which is going to eliminate the uh, threat of being hung up on the side of the basin. <clears throat> These three pumps have integrated switches which means the switch is part of the pump. Now this fourth option here is also a vertical float switch. As you can see here, straight up and straight back down. This one also has a guard on the side to protect it from being pinned up against the side of the basin or other debris that could be in the way. So it's just one extra safety guard that you can add to the vertical float switch. This switch is actually separate from the pump itself, so if the switch were to fail, you could actually unbolt two of these stainless steel screws and replace just the switch without tearing the entire system out. Again, the number one failing component in a sump pump is the switch. It receives the most wear and tear, is the most active component in your system, and is the most likely to fail. So in conclusion, you want to make sure that you're picking out the right switch for the environment that your pump's going to be running in. Which one is that for you? Thanks for your time.